Viriato, Terror of Rome and Legend of Hispania. In the annals of Iberian history, a remarkable military leader and a strategist emerged who challenged the presence of imperial powers in the region. Their legacy endures as a symbol of resistance and courage during a period of intense conflict. Employing ingenious tactics and unwearying determination, this leader unified their people against formidable adversaries, leaving an indelible mark on the history of the peninsula. Early Years Something extremely important to mention before talking about the early years of Viriato is to clarify that almost all the bibliographic material we will use will be two classical sources. The works written by Apianus, who chronologically listed the facts seeking objectivity, and Diodorus of Sicily, who sought a more epic account to form an idealized figure of Viriato. Although there is also remarkable historic material in other classical authors, these two sources are the most widely disseminated. Viriato's birthplace cannot be determined exactly and, although everything indicates that he was a native of Lusitania, a Roman province that covered the west of the Iberian Peninsula, it is hasty to state with certainty whatever he came from Portugal or Spain. Today, historians have come almost by consensus to take either of these two countries as the place of origin of the Lusitanian icon. As for the beginning of his military career, several authors propose that it might have begun when he abandoned his job as a sheep herder to devote himself to hunting and later to war. Apianus proposed that Viriatus belonged to the class of warriors who escaped from the praetor Servius Sulpicius Galva. He also shed some light on Viriatus' rise as an army leader and how he managed to gain the respect and loyalty of his men. Everything indicates that Viriato did not inherit this title. On the contrary, he was chosen by his comrades because of his military talent, his great leadership, capacity, and his honesty when it came to distributing the spoils. This acceptance by his soldiers was key when it came to undertake the campaigns, since such commanding qualities literally provoked fear and uncertainty among the Romans, which make it clear why Biriato received the nickname of Terror of Rome. Campaigns against Rome as a part of the Second Punic War, Rome made incursions into Hispania in an attempt to conquer the entire region. In 185 BC, they carried out the first incursion into Lusitania, making swift and violent attacks that culminated in a peace treaty between the two sides. However, the Lusitanians formed a mob of approximately 30,000 people to protest in peace to the Romans and regain the lands that had been taken from them. The consul Galva promised to distribute these lands again, but asked them as a condition that they leave the place in groups, deceiving them in cold blood to decimate them and taking advantage of the moment to kill about 30% of the crowd. In addition, he enslaved the rest and forbade them to return to their land. It is believed that Viriato was one of the few who escaped from this place and that he orchestrated his plan of revenge from this event onwards. In 147 BC, conditions were ideal for the first campaign against Rome and Viriatus led a contingent of approximately 10,000 Lusitanians into Tour de Tania. The Romans quickly moved to encircle them and offer a peace treaty, but Viriatus distrust this diplomatic Roman strategy and refused because of the danger of betrayal. After this, the Lusitanians managed to escape the siege and ambush the Roman troops of Praetor Vetilio to defeat them, achieving the first decisive victory of the campaign, since they were able to break through easily thanks to this conquest, in addition to the fact that the resupply was a simple task if we take into account the resources of the area. 
From this point on, Viriato became a hero for the Lusitanians since the conquest of his army were epic feats that were quickly transmitted among the society. In less than a year, he defeated Plautius, Claudius Unimanus, Gaius Nigidius and the aforementioned Vetilius. As a trophy, Viriato placed the Roman banners in the mountains, which was a clear message to his enemies. Fear in Rome Logically, this caused a stir in Rome as they realized that Viriato and the Lusitanian army were not taken with the seriousness and respect they deserved. On the contrary, the Romans greatly underestimated these enemies. The rumors among the neighboring peoples were uncontrollable, so the Romans decided to take action before the social phenomenon that the Lusitanian army was provoking became too great. In 145 BC, they were able to reinforce their army significantly as the war against Carthage was over and they were able to concentrate fully on Hispania. However, Viriato continued to lead the Lusitanians with determination and countless decisive victories, earning the famous nickname Terror of Rome. In fact, in 140 BC, Viriato forced the consul Servilianus to sign a peace treaty as he had grown tired of the war and the Romans had proposed the idea of declaring Lusitania an independent country. Obviously, this did not last long as the Roman high command considered that Servilianus' decision did not represent at all the values of the empire and practically was declaring Viriatus winner of the war. War. Dead. Servilianus was removed from office and his brother Sepion, who immediately began a relentless persecution against Viriatus, was charged with replacing him. However, he achieved his goal in the least expected way, since he managed to negotiate with the ambassadors that Viriato had sent to Rome, convincing them to betray the leader in exchange for a gigantic reward. Thus, Audax, Ditalco and Minuro ended Viriato's life while he slept, fleeing to Rome immediately to collect their reward. Although Sepium told them that Rome does not pay traitors, denying them the negotiation. The Lusitanians organized a gigantic funeral for their greatest leader. Viriato awakened a whole generation of revolutionaries and pointed the way forward to weaken the most powerful empire of all, demonstrating that guerrilla warfare was a highly effective strategy against powerful enemies. Hey, don't close the video yet. Before you go, please subscribe and leave us a like if you like the content. It will help us to grow and continue making much more content. Now, without further ado, we say goodbye.